right. I think we are live. It's Amigos. It's live. It's Mike Fenoya. How are you guys? Welcome. Uh, we are here. Uh, this is the quarantine tapes. Um, I'm here with uh, a couple of friends, uh, co author, co host of uh, Still Chasing, host of Welcome to the Party Pal, Across the Margin, the ATM podcast, mm -hmm. and uh, many others, Michael Shields. And, uh, how are okay. you, Mikey? I'm great. Coming up great. From, to us from Brooklyn. I'm glad to be with you guys. Yeah. And also, we have um, the one, the only. Honored to have you here, buddy. Mr. Tomas Marshall. Tomas. Not Thomas. Tom. Tomas Marshall. Hey. Hey, Mike. And hey, Mike. Uh, thanks so much for having me, you guys. Thanks to my fellow uh, Osiris podcasters for having me on. This is uh, coming to you guys live from the Osiris YouTube channel uh we're all in our respective uh secret underground bunkers we've chosen different backgrounds um i chose i chose a therapist's office <laughs> as a background <laughs> i chose random random american living room background and i don't have anything uh funny to say about my i got a cool picture my friend took with an eye on it chris prosson mike tom and i were um observing and uh commenting on how great your mustache is. i knew you were gonna go there it's actually it was i was i had it a little cleaner but i do have some dirt on my upper lip i want to do something funny for uh this situation we got you got to get weird you got to get weird and stay weird dude you're grown you grow like uh a, a mets you have a wally back <laughs> you're like an 80s baseball player mustache damn right it's uh it's, it's this is high praise mike I, like I someone it. that someone that does coke this way is... too out in the open <laughs> how dare you it's my first that's my, that's my first mustache so uh, I couldn't think of a better time to you do never it. Never forget your first mustache. You never, it's never a big forget. deal. It's a big deal. I wish I could forget my Don't first forget mustache. Where you were. Tom, yeah. did you ever go through a mustache phase? I did. I did. It was uh, it was brief. Thank goodness. Uh, I kept it sort of close. It was a full beard, full mustache, and it was black as night. And uh, it lasted possibly like I flirted with it for like a year or two at most. And uh, the general reaction was negative. Children <laughs> run away screaming, and so my I, daughter's my daughter's been begging me to shave it. <laughs> she's she's not pleased. Guys, today is um, you know, it's it's April second, and April second, nineteen ninety eight was the first night of uh, one of the greatest runs in fish history. Yeah, so it's kind Island of interesting anniversary. Yeah, things were a little different then, huh? Yeah. Are we going to remember this? Like that's all, everything's going to be pre-COVID and post-COVID now? <laughs> Peace. Yeah, that, yeah. Before disease, after disease. I think it's going to be uh, before Sigma Oasis and after Sigma Oasis because uh, I don't know. Um, I'll speak for myself and uh, I, want to, I want to ask you guys before we get into the nitty gritty here. Yesterday, the band released the album and we, we had viewing parties and listening parties, uh, whether it was YouTube or Facebook. Um, I personally, I watched it on Facebook. And it was such a, you know, April, for some reason, April 1st, I felt like it was just a, a new month starting of this, you know, shit new life we're kind of all living. And it was frustrating. I think I talked to both of you about how frustrated I was yesterday, but the tension built and then the release came. And once again, Fish was there to, to give us, a, you know, a breath of fresh air in a, in a world of garbage. So uh, it was really cool to be on facebook and see all my high school friends all my tour friends joining in it's like this person's now watching this person just joined and i got like a little choked up because it felt like we just entered the venue and we were waiting for the show to start you know we were all kind of hanging out in the chat room waiting for it to get going and uh i was just wondering if you guys had that pre pre-album jitters uh mike you, you want to go or you want me to go yeah, I'll, I'll i'll rock it real quick no it was uh it was amazing i um it was maybe the best hour i've had during this nonsense i lived i was telling you guys earlier i live near a hospital so there's sirens abound i was able to put on uh headphones and just really get into it the album was as as we'll get into it's really really special but it was just it was so cathartic to me and also just this weird odd unique communal experience of listening with people i was texting the whole time and just it just i was just happy and it was just such a gift. Tom? Yeah. yeah, no, I was just gonna echo basically that. Uh, so excited that Fish kind of came up with the idea of doing it at all, right at the right moment. It seemed like all these tensions were happening, uh, just like in my day in particular, but 
but across the entire globe, obviously. And at least for that little moment, we had like the fish community came together and then the album was tremendously mm -hmm. good. <laughs> I, I was like happy that I hadn't heard a lot of these mixes. Um, I would, I kind of knew some of the titles mm -hmm. that were going to be on it, but I didn't, hadn't heard it really. And I was just absolutely completely blown away. Like, to the point of like fully emotional. Plus I had yeah. set up a couple like live tweets ready to go. So I was like actively like running from one computer back to the room and my daughter <laughs> and uh, wife were in the, in the uh, room waiting for me. It was a really great experience. And then seeing the people's reactions on, uh, on Twitter and also uh, texting me, my phone just exploded and everyone flipped out and loved it. So it was an incredible night for me last night. A really amazing night. I'm so proud to be, part of it well tom you know in all honesty you should you, congratulations i mean and and thank you Agreed. yep and i mean this is look story of the ghost a lot of story of the ghost was um a couple songs were debuted at island tour you know birds of a feather and shafty and frankie says and you know it's funny to look back that at that and look at what we're doing here story of the ghost i think uh, this is my favorite album since Story of the Ghost. And uh, I absolutely am so proud and, I mean, just grateful to even be able to chat with you about this. The lyric, I was texting you during Leaves, man, and I was like, Jesus Christ, this is just... Leaves. I mean... Leaves. <laughs> leaves. Leaves is just... I mean, that that one that one did it, man. I think, well, they, have, they, I think, they, play, I think they played it. A couple of times, once at least once, right? They played it during three, yeah. three times. Baker's dozen, yeah. and, and as far as three I times. know or could tell, I think it kind of went largely unnoticed. And so yeah. now people are kind of noticing it, and I'm glad because, to me, it's a it's a special song that says a lot. I'm really hoping that this means uh, they play it more now that everyone's out there and and, and really enjoying oh, it. It was yeah. very interesting for me just to hear that you didn't. It sounds like you didn't know uh, exactly the track list. Um, I think I knew the track list. I okay, knew okay. Yeah. You mentioned something, but I mean, so many of your um, uh, songs that you've uh, written, not just recently, but I mean, we're talking back to 2011 with Steam. I mean, there's some of uh, what I believe are some of your songwriting masterpieces are kind of came together in this album. They must have been, you know, you said it was special, but it must have been really unique and, and interesting to see it all come together, all these songs written over this nine year span. Just in this, how did it feel? Oh, man. Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, well, first of all, to address the old songs versus the new songs, mm -hmm. um, our pal Scott Marks, Biz Archive on Twitter, put mm -hmm. together a, a list that I found sort of helpful. Steam, like you said, is the oldest. And then Shade, Mercury yeah. from 2015, Leaves, Everything's Right, and Thread from 2017. Mm -hmm. And then Life Beyond the Dream, Sigma Oasis, and the most recent current song is evening song from 2019 which so, is another phenomenal i mean just such a beautiful song thanks man well the the you know the band i'm 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 the words and then trey and the band made it sound this amazing so mm -hmm. uh they worked hard tirelessly on making it sound this good so you know i don't i'm not going to take anything away from how incredible it sounds that's all them but uh yeah no i'm really really lucky and honored to have words on here and these happen to be songs that I, I also love. And it's mm. kind of cool that they were all like tried and true, most of them on the road, actually all of them on the road a little bit, right? So yeah, every one, every, yeah. every single one, every yep. single one was played. Yep. There, there was one that could almost, I think fell off. I think they did a recording of um, Epitaph um, uh. and I don't think it made it on for whatever reason, uh, but that would have been the one that hadn't been toured, hadn't been played. Mm. So now they can't say that, or now they. You know, <laughs> I, I noticed. I noticed in watching the uh, montage that was put together, that was playing along with the album. Yeah. And there was that whiteboard that is always in the background, and you see songs kind of listed, and a couple things are checked off or crossed off, and I saw like "Sightless um, Escape." Escape. Yeah. Was one that was crossed off, and then. Um, so Epitaph, that one. Do you know of any others that, and also the, the band released a really cool um, message today yeah, talking they said, about- they let a few go. They let a few go. Let a few go and yeah. they were like, you know, it stinks, but it is what it is. But mm -hmm. I mean, so do you, the, the one Epitaph is the one that you know of that didn't make the cut? 
That's actually the only one that I knew of. Uh, what were the other two? Did they name them? They did no. not. Of course uh, not. You said two. <laughs> I thought you said two, though. Sightless and Escape. For... Well, I saw Sightless on the on the um, the board when oh, yeah. I was watching, okay. but the, in the in the write up that they said, oh, okay, um, it's actually really beautiful, and I'll we'll tweet it out and we'll tweet it from Osiris. But it was really a, a nice message that the band had put out. Did you not see it, Tom? I didn't see it today. No. No. One of the things that they said that actually I'll just like, you know, read right now. Um, the last line of the chorus, Sigma Oasis, sums up this point. There's no place to get. There's nothing to achieve. There's no place to be. We're here, right here, right now is as good as it gets. You're already there. It's a content state of mind. You're just completely in the moment. You're already there. You already have everything you need. Sigma Oasis. It aligns with where we are in our career and as friends and musicians. There's a joy in the playing. We're not clamoring to make it. Make what? We're already there, Sigma Oasis. So it's kind of neat, that's how it ended. And it, it's a nice thing about how this album was recorded in November of, of 2019. Right. Mike, you and I talked about it and I wanna to talk to Tom about it too. Like how unbelievable, I texted you this last night, Tom. This album is exactly what we all needed, not wanted. <laughs> it's what we needed. The lyrics and the messages in these songs breathe. You know, everything's right. I mean, there's so many great messages in this album. I mean, just I wanted to grab your thoughts on just like how amazingly synchronistic it all is with what we're Don't give all dealing hope. with right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, just like where we are right now as a as a nation and as a as a country in the world, it's like right now we as humans, we want to find the good. Right. We want to we're, we have some time off from work or kids are home. There's time to explore lost projects. But it's offset against this very bad and serious pandemic, right? And the mm -hmm. toll that it's taken already. But more importantly, all of us are you know, sitting here very worried about the toll that it's about to take. And, uh, you know, we're all worried that it could be unimaginably bad. Uh, but here we are, you know, like, you know, there's another backdrop. It's all my musical friends watched their entire tours just go up in smoke. Their livelihoods were kind of yanked away. And I'm proud of them all, They're every single one of them making the best of it, you know, collaborating online, doing virtual concerts, online instrument lessons. I've seen entire orchestras playing like Beethoven's Fifth from their individual homes, like 12 people doing their parts. Uh, and it's a remarkable thing we're living through right now. And these highlights are going to be what get us through. But um, yeah, like working apart with, uh, from, you know, from Trey, getting some, some of these things written um i'll remind you there's there's sort of like like you said this was recorded in november which is pre-covid so all these songs were written before any of this even even happened mm -hmm. yeah yeah but there, there is a dividing line where some of the stuff that trey's been coming out with they've been calling it his quarantine album and that stuff is post covid so we can talk about one or the other but yeah it's, let's well, should we just dig into um uh oasis first or you want to do uh quarantine because i you know i get a lot of questions on these songs uh you're pick, to tom either one uh i'll do i'll do whatever you guys want want i mean uh sigma oasis is probably more interesting to people right now yeah this, that's what this is about so i mean that's the title track and it's, i'm almost embarrassed on how little i know about uh the meaning behind it anything i can take away with it really just seems like it's about uh living in the moment and i also know that it uh it harkens back you um you know scott Har uh, herman uh writes with you a lot and so you have um you guys have created three books i'd love for you to speak on them and the third one is uh sigma oasis so this is i mean that that song uh this idea is behind it it's been brewing for a little bit let's uh, tell us everything um there, tell, yeah. us everything. tell us everything i don't know enough about it dish tom dish first uh thanks for bringing up scott herman he's my uh amazing friend scott herman mm -hmm. Skippy, he's been my longtime like fish fan, wingman, uh, writer, lyricist pal, lyricist pal, and he's always been around. He's he's the one who I most often bounce ideas on before they go anywhere, before they leave my house. And lately, and I welcome it, and so does Trey. He's he's had more of a creative hand in a lot of the uh, new stuff, and it's fantastic. So he's got um, he's helped in two songs on this particular album, Sigma Oasis itself. Mm -hmm and um, Evening Song. Um, but uh, yeah, like you were saying, he and I, way back, and I just got it out in case anyone wanted to see it, there's three books that I actually call the real helping friendly books of fish. 
You, no, you, do you have them? Yes, I do. Um, no one's ever <laughs> oh, seen Oh, nice. They're right here. I'll show you the cover, but basically I'll give you a preview. It's uh, Scott Herman and I worked at at t and this is years and years ago. There was an eight in the third digit of the year. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we put together, uh, that's when we met, but long around 97, we put together a bunch of our creative musings that largely went back and forth via email and we That's it. put it in a book and called it Salamander Prince and Trey wow. and the band wrote a whole bunch of songs from this. What's that image? Can you go a little bit forward? Yeah, oh. so this is actually me with a beard. <laughs> <You're asking. laughs> Whoa, check that out. But it's in reverse and it looks so creepy that we called it the Salamander Prince, which is actually a character in one of the songs that Scott wrote in here. But if you look mm -hmm. at the okay. date, it's... 3397. 3, we actually get a glimpse of uh, Tom reverse mustache. That's pretty yes. neat. That's my reverse mustache. <laughs> I'm trying to grow another reverse mustache right now. It's the time. Everyone's <laughs> doing it, man. <laughs> um, and then the next one is called uh, On the Walls of the okay. Cave. On the Walls. Yeah. What were the two albums, the songs that... Um, that those, keep keep those that up songs? for a minute. T Tom, keep that up for one minute. And then say something, Tom. Okay. So this one, this one... Uh, directly, so the first one, Salamander Prince, directly contributed to uh, Farmhouse, Story of the Ghost, and Billy Breathes. Mm. This one directly contributed to Round Room and Undermind. And um, we now, Scott and I, since this June 2002, um, have been compiling a whole bunch of stuff, and that's what now we're putting together, and that's called Sigma Oasis. Sigma Oasis. Now, Sigma Oasis, since you're asking. <coughs> I am, I'm definitely the, the asking. Thing that actually Trey and me and my friends uh, from like eighth and ninth grade in Princeton Day School where Trey was, we actually called a, a particular song or a version of the band or something, we called Sigma Oasis. There is an, a weird instrumental thing, jam that we called Sigma Oasis. Uh, so Sigma Oasis like refers to like this early version of songwriting that like Trey and I and some of my friends, Mark Daubert and Dave Abrahams were into since the very beginning of our relationship. So mm -hmm. it encompasses a lot and it's sort of like personal, meaningful and stuff. And I'd say some of the, it touches on themes of the past that Scott and Trey and I kind of wrapped into one song and the ideas are fundamental to our songwriting. And, um, basically it's abstract and it probably should stay that way <laughs> i you know i do on under the scales i do deep dives into lyrics but i have a feeling i won't be doing one for this song but i do no. love the lyrics uh, i thought, I thought <laughs> you might be tight-lipped on this one uh, I, yeah i think so but i mean I, on twitter last night i remarked on the lyrics and scott scott brought this up and so did trey take off take off take off your mask the fear is an illusion so don't even ask it's, it's not okay right now <laughs> that's, that's not, not okay. okay keep your mask on folks yep. It was uh, it was really awesome to follow along on your Twitter while the songs were, yeah. I know you said you had some preloaded stuff and it was really wild to check out some of the stuff that you were putting up there, including artwork, including, you know, some of like little vignettes of the lyrics and what it meant to you. Mm -hmm. um, that, I mean, I'm, I'm really so stoked to, to, to hear more about it, but that was something that was so... It was like it was like seeing like one of the director. We were watching the director's cut. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a lot of friends thank me in particular for yeah. a lot of tweeting last night. They they really liked it, and I got a lot of answers to that in real time, and it was fun. But I was trying to watch, you know, I was trying to watch the images that Fish had up as well, which were very beautiful. I guess Renee photos is beautiful. So good. Yeah, and you know, sonically, and 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 we talked about this a little bit, Tom, on text last night that there this didn't sound at all synthetic. This didn't sound at all. It sounded so pure and so live and raw. And the recordings you could tell were just start to finish cuts and obviously overdubs a little bit with, you know, post stuff. But I mean, the, the guttural raw energy of this album from track to track, it, it just captured the live essence so much of this band. A lot of people I saw online were like, this is Fish finally sounding like Fish on an album. And there's three jams, right? Uh, they do. Yeah. At least, oh God! Right. Everything's right, right? And uh, Steam has Steam, a different. Steam. I mean, Steam is incredible. I mean, just unbelievable. Such a soulful version of Steam too. I like the Steam with the back with the backing lyrics too. That was pretty fun. Yeah. So the second song after uh, Sigma Oasis is <laughs> Leaves, and um, I'd love to get unbelievable. into that. Unbelievable! I'm, it's, I'm, it's truly I'm madly unbelievable. in love. 
that song is I'm I'm so surprised not surprised but today after listening to the album five six times over that song from 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 moment one I was like Jesus Christ this song is the most beautiful That's, thing I, I've and ever you spoke heard. of uh, you spoke of the artwork he was showing and you sh the, the the picture you chose was uh kind of like this fire raining down the earth and you used uh you know that passage we built a kingdom out of lies and we blindly fa um, fanned the f a fire and it just it gets deep. Um, in honor, a little nod to uh, RJB, um, you know, co-founder of Osiris. He, uh, when you guys do the lyrical deep dives, he usually takes a stab at the meaning of what it is. And then you tell him that he's wrong. And then you tell him what it is. Yeah, and you're I like, was, oh, it's about a I, chick I knew in college. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, I, for leaves, I mean, just for like my take on it. And it, I almost, I'm sure I'm reading into it, is like politically, just like, this um this kingdom of lies feels like you know lies from above governmental type things um we blindly fanned the fires we've warned uh warmed our hands with glowing coals like I'm, I'm, I'm having climate change type things and then it goes back to kind of uh to me of course um having solace in music because notes are rarely wrong and then there's even solace from all this you know torment around in um in nature the moonlight dances softly in the leaves and and so I don't know. I was just throwing out some ideas that I have that ring in my head when I hear it. Um, tell Thank me I'm wrong and tell me what's going on. Totally, man. Not, even, uh, not even close. None, <laughs> none of them are wrong. There is no wrong. Is a, no wrong. There's no wrong. And, and Thank you. I think there's there seems to be un, unwittingly a kind of a, a political message in there a little bit. Yeah. Um, but then, unwittingly though, if you if you distill it down, there's like a, there's and Trey and I kind of realize you know sometimes we we realized what, what we were writing about. I mean, we write a song to figure out what we are thinking about, right? So <laughs> um, when, when you really boil this one down, it kind of seems to be the concept of nature telling us something, like trying to say yeah. it in a way. And it's very clear at the end of the song, the earth is telling us, like mm -hmm. writing messages on leaves and moonlight, mm -hmm. uh, imploring us to breathe. And here's another weird COVID-19 thing because that one affects the lungs and, and breathing, which is another weird, unusual parallel to reality. But no, Leaves is, is to me, it's uh, my favorite song on the album so far. And, and I don't have any that I dislike at all. Mm -hmm. uh, right, but yeah, Leaves agreed. I go back and listen to over and over again, just because I'm so incredibly thrilled with the way it came out. Fishman's voice on it. Uh, the bass um, and then the amazing strings by Don Hart are just, yeah. I mean, phenomenal, really phenomenal. You know, Tom, as well, one of the things that, you know, you, you talked about breathing and the COVID and all that. Um, also, the best way to combat anxiety is to breathe. And it's almost like at, when, when I was listening to this last night, I was getting tears in my eyes that it's like this song was the breath that we all needed to breathe at the moment and the way that breathe is kind of like held out like the longer you inhale and hold and exhale is that's more of a meditative transcendent way of breathing which is a the natural cure for anxiety and i'm so, so glad I, came, it came so close to the beginning of the album for us all to sort of get into that sort of trancey meditative state early and yeah, yes. appreciated its its location oh um, it's yeah, perfect right. Right into uh, everything's right to keep things incredibly positive. Well, and wait, and before and before we get into everything's right, I just oh, want we don't to have say to leave leaves thing, all night. One of the things lie. that I like, one of the things I like the most about leaves too is, and and again, I mentioned this to you earlier, was that that jam when it's like almost towards the end, about four minutes left in the song, three minutes left in the song, when that first like chorus of breathe, there's a nice deep bug reminiscent mm. jam there that just gets gritty and dirty when like, it just reminds me of that. It doesn't matter like that part of bug. And that to me always is a point at a show where I tears just stream down my face. I'm just so excited for that. So I was like, this song builds and crescendos at this point where we're just breathing out all of the bad and taking in all the good. And it was just- Parts of Sigma Oasis that have a little bug reminiscence for mm -hmm. me as well. So that's interesting. Well, we're both big fans of Bug. I know yeah. we've talked about that quite a bit. So, <laughs> totally, totally. On to everything's right, huh? What do you say? All right, here's another COVID line. Ready? Yeah. Um, I'm in prison without a crime. My sentence stretches on undefined. Very, very, <laughs> very <laughs> true. Undefined. It almost it, it's 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 almost scary how much some of these lines hit home, and and, and some of them are uh, 
are, are brutal. I mean, we'll, we'll get into it, but you're alone being screamed at you right now. That's, that's pretty daunting. Well, that's a, that's in thread. That's, that's in, in thread. thread. I know. I'm yeah. saying like these lines. One of my, they, one they, of the best things. This really whole hit, album. They really hit whole, hard right now. Well, this whole right. album is like, don't give up hope. Don't give up okay. hope. Breathe. Everything's right. And then it's like, you're all alone. <laughs> you're all alone. It's like perfect fish. It's yeah. scary at the end. <laughs> there seems to be like, you know, a lot of COVID related themes in this album which is bizarre yeah. and, and it does make sense somehow somehow it makes sense and and so scott t scott and um trey and i have been talking about it quite a bit and i guess isolation and loneliness sort of has been a theme of mine for a long time like gra grappling with emotions in and out of relationships and the, the stillness that follows maybe um but scott trey said the same thing to me at the same time after a conversation we were having and and it's hilarious they said all our songs about are about COVID-19 or, <laughs> or caves <laughs> COVID-19 or caves and you're, you're typecast into COVID-19 and caves that's hilarious and oceans wait, yeah. and, wait, oceans. You know what it is? and, and wood that, now too there's a lot of wood references in the we'll get to it and yes. um yeah. the quarantine it's, stuff. It's, it's very funny that those who don't know fish and don't are quick to poo poo them as, you know, oh, this is a, some noodly jam band, whatever. The lyrics have like that you've provided, Tom, have always been, which I've always really kind of felt like very attached to, are not scared to get into the the those moments, you know, stranded on a slender string and the minutes seem mm. to last a lifetime. Yeah. There are, are, are very those moments. I mean, this right now we're living in the longest panic attack any of us i find it interesting that you me bob dylan we're all going through this together like we're all going through like all the most brilliant people alive are going through this with the st same stupid people like we're all you going through this you me and bob dylan are the, are the brilliant ones is that what you're saying yeah 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 you me bob dylan and then like i feel, like you know, I Trump feel very left out jokes. right now no you too mikey right. but you know what i mean it's just that like I think that these lyrics are, I mean, obviously it wasn't written about this, but it's so cool that, you know, anxiety and loneliness and all of that is an amazing theme. And it's like an endless well to write about. Absolutely. Mercury, the days that are met with loneliness, aid and aid and vet my loneliness. Absolutely. Uh, no, I mean, we're all a little bit broken. We're all a little bit scared and it, and you know, uh, it's, it's exacerbated now, but it's, it's something we, always dealt with and I think a lot of the lyrics you've written throughout the years we all relate to because they're honest and pure and you know I mean they're they're relatable to feelings we're having <laughs> and now we're having those feelings on steroids everything's right is we already touched on the jams too but uh uh it's been a song that I have just loved and uh, fish fans have just loved seeing live so much it's like almost like a hundred percent uh, you know, when it comes to their jam, they just kill it every time. And they found a way to like bottle that up, bring it in studio and put out that blissful, amazing jam for everything's right. It's just, it's incredible. I love it. I love it. And incredible. there's every, every now and then there's, there's stuff to hear. It's a great headphone album. Yeah. I've been, uh, you know, walking with it and I've been making my walks a lot longer than they normally are, which is <laughs> long. And just listening over and over and over again. And there's voices you can't quite tell. They're, they're in weird parts, like in steam. I call it like the steam choirs, like doing weird woo, 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 woo. Very strange. Love that. Oh yeah. my God, I love that. Well, Mike, Mike talked about how, um, you know, it was conceived in November. And I guess at that point, um, they needed, they, the producer needed some time before. So it gave, it gave Trey or Paige or anyone uh, a couple months to work on it and add in layers and add in their own production to it. So they were able to, you know, kind of yeah, enhance Tom. the whole thing. That was part of the the message that they put out, you know, that they were explaining that they weren't planning on releasing this the way that it did. But in that time, the like Mike said, the producer goes, "Do you mind if I wait until March to do the final mix?" So then everybody, like Paige, went back over and did some like overlays. And I mean, the everything's right jam goes from like deep, deep no quarter type jams to like Pink Floyd echoes. Yeah. I hear in there a little bit, and I mean, I think he's the MVP in that that song for sure. I mean, it, you can really hear Paige so much in this album. Sigma Oasis has synthesizers and keyboards from Paige that I don't think I've heard. They're yeah. amazing, his treatment. And they're not overdone. They're, they're, they're light and they're tasteful and they're amazing. And it's just such another great 
aspect that I, I love about this album. It's uh, I keep finding new stuff. That's kind of what it is. I've, I've been listening, like you yeah. said, Mike, you listened five times today. I think mm -hmm. I might've doubled that. <laughs> well, I also listened to uh, Trey's uh, solo stuff five times today too, just because I knew we were going to talk about it. So <laughs> <laughs> only so many hours in the day, I'm awake. It Another was, um, thing people keep on. talking about is Mer Mercury, uh, your day is longer than your year. People, yes. people people's days are stretching on endlessly at, at this moment. That was the, I saw that put out there soon after this started. And I'm like, oh boy, let's talk about Mercury. It was really special to, uh, to finally see it get, I mean, Mercury is a masterpiece. It's incredible. And to finally see it get its just due as a, as a, uh, uh, its studio just due was, was amazing. Sounds great. Yeah. Uh, you know, Fish is a live band and and a lot of people were tweeting yesterday and today, have they become a studio band? <laughs> and like, what a perfect time, right? It's well, so exciting to see people the... excited about a studio album though. It's not it's not what happens in uh, Fish Universe. Right. It, well, this is, and, this and, is cool. And exactly. they're the perfect band for it because they could easily right now put out three or four albums mm -hmm. with all the stuff that's just live. Yeah, I mean, really, they could if they want, they could put out a fifty-eight minute Runaway Jim. <laughs> That's an album, you know. Yeah. So. Ben and I are at the perfect age to appreciate uh, studio albums because you know we grew up on Pink Floyd and mm -hmm. you know, all, all these amazing bands that make incredible studio albums, and that sort of what you know like fed us in high school and college, and now they're kind of like getting a chance to to join that game. They always seem to have been, you know, obviously live centric. And now, you know, for, for once they have an amazing, I think they've always sort of felt like they had this incredible album in them. I, mean, I know mm -hmm. Trey has sort of felt that, you know, this is, this is the album that, that sort of has been chasing him sort of for a long time. And they finally well, like that, had time and, and the opportunity to do it, you know, to do it right. And, and, you know, just like, um, you know, with, with working out a different muscle group or whatever, I mean, Trey's singing is so courageous right now. And it's yeah. like really fierce and he's hitting levels that he never hit before. Mm. And Ghost of the Forest, I think, gave him, you know, kind of, I don't know, maybe the self permission to go for it. But some of the some of the ways that he sings you know, in Life Beyond a Dream and in Mercury and Shade mm. even, like yeah, he, the gets, end of, the end of he goes for going it. Going out, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like mm. he's got that singing in the shower balls, but it's <laughs> he, he's nailing it, you know. <laughs> he, I think, more than anything that I know of that he's working on now is, is his voice. He's, he's singing. Really been uh, trying to push the singing, you know, kick it up a notch, and he sure has. This album is incredible, and I like the new lines that he's finding. Um, you know, even though we we've all gotten used to a version of Shade, for example, and hearing slightly different version. That he's doing now to me it's a it's an improvement over sort of the the standard one that repeats this is different he's finding like new roots around these words and yeah. making the words pop in, a, in an incredible emotional way yeah it's extremely deep. soulful you know yeah. this was like a, this was like a soul prog album i felt like yeah can we Absolutely. can we can we uh it was just brought up and i'm gonna force the issue can we talk more shade because um I'm a bit of a, a a fish ballad guy. I um, call me soft or whatever. It's you know so soft many times, so many <laughs> so many times it shows that ballad came at the right time. That you know between these monstrous jams and it was the valley that I needed. And I think even last night during shade, I, I was getting pretty emotional. It's amazing. I think I was texting anyone that was at the top of my text list. I love you. And it was just it was just, it's it's really <laughs> a song that I really really love. And. Uh, I was just wondering if you could talk a little bit about like some of the imagery in it, or wait, actually, you mentioned that um, you were kind of talking a little trash on waste, or you were talking about the separation between waste and shade. Is what I should say. It's, but, it's uh, grown you, up waste, right? It's grown up waste, but shade uh, uh, is a song about getting lost. You said and finding your way home, and so how so, if you don't mind? Um, so I guess that was metaphorical, right? So mm -hmm. home, home is the relationship, and getting lost is getting away from the relationship. So. To me, it's like, it's a couple that loves each other very much, but they've both experienced doubts and both have run away and gotten lost. Um, but the person waited for him or her to come home. So like in the beginning, the guy finds her ring that she might've taken off or, or thrown into the back alley or whatever it is. And by the end, he puts it back on her finger. So it's yeah. like, that's what I mean by running away and finding yourself back home. Yeah, there's a um, serious like through line or, or kind of theme of loyalty too. And it, I didn't know, uh, 
if I went away, I'd get lost and you'd still be there anyway. I'm going to cry right now. I don't care. Oh, <laughs> I, come I, on, it's, man. It's my come on. Shade's amazing. I just think it's so beautiful. Yeah. And then, uh, so the ring was a little bit literal. I was always reading into like what, you know. I think, I think to me, you know, as I wrote it, I was thinking about, you know, uncovering a ring like in dirt sort of. Mm -hmm. and, and and the story behind how it got there that's kind of like how how the song started that's but amazing. uh yeah no it, it became a you know south of the border and over the moon where they find their their spot where they're dancing and and singing the tune and and it, yeah to me it's a beautiful it's a couple and they go through ups and downs like any yeah. couple and and uh to me it's a yeah definitely a love song but more complicated sort of complex love song waste is just i wasn't talking trash about it i think <laughs> i didn't mean to do it but but I, I don't know if steam is like the one you play at your wedding maybe maybe it is it, uh, who knows yeah dude yeah that's the relationship that lasts if, you're, <laughs> if your dance is steam hey tom i want to ask you, you about so like instance with with shade and i and i want to i mean i'm sure it's different every time but do you have the do you have the chord progression ever in mind do you ever say to trey like i hear like a sharp minor here or i hear an e flat or you know do you hum it to yourself or do you go hey here's the words and then you the first time you hear it you're like oh no shit that like that's what it sounds like well shade in particular that was all trey but um yeah wow. there, there, there are songs that i write either like on the guitar or you know sketch out on the piano and we'll bring that to trey and he loves that because then he gets to because I get trapped, like, you know, on a keyboard, it's like I get caught in C, F, G, you know, <laughs> B, you know, a couple of the obvious things that, that that keyboard people who aren't very good fall into the traps of. And then Trey just sort of says, great, that's a great foundation and I can build upon it. And he loves it when yeah. I bring that. But uh, Shade in particular, I just, that was just lyrics that he he did the whole thing. Wow. Okay. It's amazing how, and then you hear it, and you must be like, that's what that's supposed to sound like. That's such oh, yeah. a wild relationship. Yeah. Totally, totally. No question. That is how that is supposed to sound. <laughs> so uh, evening, uh, evening Song is yeah. super, super weird in this one way, um, meaning that it sounds sonically really, really sweet. But if you go through those lyrics, um, it's, it's yeah, over and tune. over and over again about troubles lurking in the dark. Uh, it, and it describes the dark as a time when good things get uh, shoved into the shadow. It's just, it's, it's about how scary the night is, it seems. It's, and, and then the song comes off so sweet. It's, that's a weird thing going and, on. And you, said, and you said Scott helped you with this one. Yep. Correct, yes. That was the other, that was the other Scott song, yep. Yep. So uh, this one to me is uh, an incredibly beautiful song that came out of nowhere. Uh, Trey, um, I had actually brought my guitar to, to a hotel that Trey and I were staying in. We weren't really planning to write. And uh, he didn't have a guitar. And I threw down some lyrics and this one was on top and Trey picked up the guitar and just started playing it. And it was yes. just, he and I both looked at each other like, oh my God, we got a, <laughs> we got a song here. And uh, yes, <laughs> no, got a hit. this one for sure, like get through the day, right? You get through the day, everything's happy and light. And the narrator here is urging caution because at night things aren't what they seem. Mm -hmm. like, night is a great, cover for dark things to slide around unseen it's a good time for spirits to cross over undetected so be aware i guess is yeah the <laughs> and, and, and all the caution. all the good stuff gets all the good stuff gets like blown away with like a wind of evil and mm -hmm. and sure. i forget the exact <laughs> words but it's very short words i'll just read them really quick i got please them. approach the night with caution it's the best that you can do move quickly through the darkness till the daylight is renewed approach the night with caution you will know it's for the best once tomorrow's morning quells the thumping in your chest. For evening is when all things dark can slide around with ease and good things all get shoved in shadows by a wicked breeze. Fuck, oh, it's not God, safe out there. It is uh, not safe. Uh, and then it ends. Now, you know, it, approach it, that, that, caution. No longer shall you roam when darkness stains the Eastern sky, be sure that you are home. For night is the dividing line that blends the right and wrong. Spirits crossing freely over can hold you there too long. And those are all the words. Uh, Jesus Christ! Yeah, it's a little. That's dark. amazing. It's dark, and it sounds. It, well, it's just the contrast to like how it how it is sonically is wild to me. It sounds real sweet when you hear an evening song. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's not. You know, it's funny too. Like for that that song hit me personally right now because I spend my days 
alone because my wife is a nurse at a hospital and my days are like, I can, you know, avoid the news and not worry about what's going on. I put on the food network because that doesn't have a ticker on the bottom that says how many people have this thing. And I blast music all day long. And then she comes home and, you know, you can see on her face the day she's had. And then she tells me the news and then it gets dark. So I approach the night with complete fucking terror <laughs> at this point. So that one, that one hit me right in the gut. And well, it's, thank a, your it's wife. a beautiful one. Thank your wife. Yeah, thank you. Fish community for us, uh, for the work she's doing. Yeah, man. It's, uh, I hope everybody that's listening is staying home. That's all mm-hmm. she says is just st- everybody needs to just stay home, but let's, we'll, we'll, let's stay on the happy stuff. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about. I love. I love that you brought back uh, even evening song to COVID because, as Tom said, they only write about two things: um, caves and COVID. So, (laughs) (laughs) what's the thing? Well, bats live in caves. Bats live in caves. Oh, is that? The bats gave us COVID, so it's all a circle. It is. uh, It is steam time, and I'm really excited for this because um, you posted. We were talking about what you were posting uh, on Twitter during it. So. You posted um, Matt Ryan is an artist uh, from Free Lunch Studio. Is that right, Tom? Yep. And so you put, posted a picture of an imprisoned woman in a tower. And you said that this is what you always think of when you think of steam. And um, steam, steam's a journey. It's, a, it's a, 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 a story. And it's kind of the first part of a trilogy. Am I right about this? You're right. And, but it, wasn't, it didn't start out that way. It, it just not. started out as steam. And steam was one of those songs where you know, painted a nice picture, but didn't know much about like the people in the in the story and didn't know much about what happened before and didn't know what happened after. And I had enough people come up to me and said, what happens next? What happens next? That, yeah. that oh, I started, I started thinking like, well, what does happen next? And what, do, like, why is that guy there? And how does this woman end up in a tower in prison and all that stuff? So I think uh, Thread sort of is part two it threads an obvious part two. It, it even follows it in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then yeah. there, there was the concept of, of epitaph, which to me actually fills in some of the front story, which is weird For, as a, as a part three, it yeah. goes back in time a little bit, but epitaph, I, I hope Wait, so, will come out at some point. Okay. So you're not going to, well, well, cause I mean, thread kind of ends with our protagonist laying down It ends in some serious despair. Uh, laying down between the epitaph, uh, uh, you know, underneath the epitaph. And so you were about to say what happens next. Uh, okay, well, let's let's go back in time a moment here. So, so Steam, um, it starts with a, a dude looking up at a tower mm-hmm. and he's in snow, snow's all around. And he looks up and sees a beautiful woman um, singing and, and throwing bread off the edge of her tower to wolves who are sort of following her around, eating the bread mm-hmm. below her. And she, he can tell there's a kinship between her and the wolves and his tower is frightening. And uh, before long, he, for some reason, which is not explained in the song, he begins to melt and be, you know, becomes a spirit. His, his body, his corporeal body melts into the snow and he just becomes a, a clean spirit and he floats up. And right around this time, he realizes that this woman is entrapped in this tower. She's a prisoner. And then her, uh, the prisoner guard, so to speak, um, comes, the guy who's keeping her in prison, shows up on this war horse and the nostrils, the horse's nostrils steam. Horse's and nostrils steam, yeah. And all this stuff. And he goes into the tower, he hears her scream, and then she emerges as a spirit. And so that's kind of how the song ends. They're happy, they fall in love, and they're swirling around the tower as spirits. When Thread starts, this woman uh, spirit has abandoned this guy. She's gone off with the wolves on a mission of revenge. Um, Damn. Yeah. And he's just left languid, like on the, on, the, on the rocks near the tower, just hoping she comes back. And the, the, the way the song starts is he feels a golden thread pulling his chest and it's her asking for help. And- That's she, what the thread is? That, that, Cause that's it keeps the revitalizing him. That's, that's the thread. It pull, yeah. it's, it's her saying, help me, come, wake up. You know, we don't know how much time has passed, but it's her needing help. And so he follows the thread and follows, uh, you know, there's different things like wrapping the golden thread tight round my wrist. I picture you singing to wolves in the mist, 
you were my companion, but you left me behind. A frown on your face and revenge on your mind. Yeah, there's resentment. Damn. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of, by the time he uh, approaches this churchyard, it's got like one scary looking tree, one gravestone under it, and like an old abandoned church. Uh, and he looks and there's like a, this weird epitaph scrawled into the rock. And that's how the, that's how the thread ends. Yeah. Um, and then it gives way to what happens next. And, and what happens next? <laughs> in e- well, in epitaph, what happens is one of the wolves turns into a high school basketball player and he ends up hanging out with Booth and Styles. And, uh, you know, uh, well, we, we'll find out at one point. It becomes an 80s movie. We I have to find out. We, we need, I mean, because we're kind of left uh, in it's, you know, to, to relate it to If Higher Strikes Back, we're left in a really dark moment of the, this the center of, you know, the center of the trilogy, you know, it's so, we're all waiting, Tom, we're waiting. Well, well and good. then, good. and then we have, um, so we basically like, we went steam into thread and then life beyond a dream, uh, we yeah. know came from the uh, Ghost of the Forest collection, right? I mean, that was something that, that. So the way that I understand it is that the al- actual album Ghost of the Forest didn't, con- didn't have this song on it. Yeah. However, no, it did not. No, right. but he would play it. Yeah, but he made a bunch of other songs for the tour. Once he did yeah. the tour, right? We we, we saw this thing. live in uh, Harlem when we were right. at the show. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So that I guess this song has been sort of in his in his mind as one that needs the you know the big studio treatment as well. Yeah. And, and the strings that it got again with Don Hart are phenomenal. Yeah. This this yeah. song came out so beautifully, and again his singing is over the top. Yeah. Over the top. And you know what else too, Tom, when it comes to the writing, where you are very, um, you know, you use a lot of uh, visions and there's literally and figurative and double entendre and a lot of different meaning. Like Trey, you could tell like Summer of 89 and A Life Beyond a Dream. Like I feel like Trey writes lyrics that are so specific to actual memories that he's having, mm. you know, and, and this song has that in it, per, you know, like two stallions on a perfect ride and all this. And it just seems to me like I know exactly the moment that he's talking about where you are talking about, you know, a tower and ghosts and caves and bats and COVID where he's like actually talking about, you know, a specific thing that I feel like he remembers maybe with Stu or with whoever. So I, that, that song sticks out as like, yep, this is a, this is a Trey written tune. And that one is completely Trey. My, I'm not involved in that one at all. And I, and I love it very much. It's, it's beautiful. I'm really glad that he let Thread end the album, though. It's like, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And we all are. It ends on that a That was the wild. Halloween gag of the album. It's like, you're alone. You're alone. I love it. It's like a That's crazy scary. split open and melt, crazy wild jam to end that. That is, that, that is amazing. Guys, we I mean, have- that's super progressive. I mean, that's yeah. just Prague to the rock, core, crazy. man. I mean, yep. that's like King Crimson sounding shit right there. Yeah. A friend of mine said Kansas or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kansas, totally. Yeah. <laughs> now, Tom, Tom, when you and I spoke for Still Chasing, we talked about, and you've talked about this a couple times. Let's get into the Trey stuff that you've been, Please, the quarantine stuff. Run out of time. Well, like you basically, um, you talked about how each song has three births, mm-hmm. right? We talked about how it's a poem that makes it to your notebook or, you know, comes out of your head and then you give it to the band. And normally in normal circumstances, they play it live or it becomes a song and then you see it live. Right. First, it becomes, yeah. yeah. First birth is I like, write it down. And it becomes a poem. Yeah. In some fashion that I like in, in some way. The second one is I'm usually with Trey or my friend Anthony and this poem two-dimensional piece of paper becomes a song that's the second birth the third if i'm lucky is it becomes a fish song a fish song right yeah, that's yeah. The third one. right it's kind of interesting that the birth cycle now of some of your writing due to quarantine and due to the you know miracles of technology are Exciting. becoming <laughs> it's a little weird it's like a it's like babies are being born in the second <laughs> trimester right now <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think what you're talking about is what people were calling, I, I mean, uh, you know, Sigma Oasis has swung the spotlight away from this stuff that Trey was doing, which is tremendously, so incredibly uh, uh, creative. He was coming out with a song a day, which was 
amazing. And then Sigma Oasis now, like, rightly, is 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 eclipsed it a little bit. But um, yeah, no, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we're working all the time, calling, sending files, sending sending lyrics back and forth. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's like working like we used to work in the old days, because uh, you know prior to uh, I guess prior to Billy Breathes really. No, no, uh, Farmhouse and Ghost were writing sessions, but the early albums like Lawn Boy, um, I guess. Uh, Rift. Yeah, even Rift, right. And Picture of Nectar were all just me sending uh, lyrics to Trey mm -hmm. and then finding out later. Even Hoist uh, were, were just me finding out later what the song's going to sound like. Then we started writing and then Salamander Prince came into play. And that's when we have been ever since up until COVID have been writing, you know, using writing sessions where we set up our old high school multi-track recordings studio. Yeah. But now a little bit better than it was back then. We've had conversations about how you prefer that. Like you, you know, for a long time it was hard where like you guys would call each other 30, 40 times a day on the phone where yeah. you'd like to sit down and, you know, now with this circumstance, are you pretty much like, you know, it has the, has the, the process changed in the sense where he's like, I need new lyrics right now. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we work best face to face. Mm. But in times like this, you know, we're, we're like phoning, texting, we're getting the words and parts right. And I've sent tracks on Dropbox and we transfer. And there's lots of ways to collaborate in this digital world. And the distance, of course, is, is a distraction. But like I said, we wrote separately for years and years. And right up until you know, the end of the, the, all the stuff that you've heard on Sigma Oasis to, to the beginning of COVID, uh, we wrote together face to face. Now we're like, you know, hearkening back to our old method. And uh, fortunately we got these extra tools. We have the internet, this robust internet that we didn't have before. We so have how, you, how are you doing it? What is, what is the process? Are you, um, do you, do you mix together? Are you sending lyrics? Uh, you know, I, I just, you know, what, what's going on? How's this, how's this coming to life? It's just incredible. Well, as you probably can tell, Trey's, you know, quite capable of playing multi-instruments and creating mm -hmm. stuff just by himself in his, in his room. And I'm the lyric provider, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, sometimes yeah. a melody provider that would be you know when we're in communication on the phone sometimes uh, we bat lyrics back and forth make sure that the the meaning is is correct that kind of thing so there's collaboration still but we're definitely separate which is nice are you are you pulling from old like pre-covid writing for there, some of these it doesn't sound there's, like it at all there there a lot of this stuff is very current yeah yeah i mean it's it's completely pointed and to what's what's happening at this point it's it's incredible um what was uh, the one the second one it was just kind of like this ballad it was about looking words, out the window when the words go away i it's get good. i mean I, it's just so affecting about like you know how uh, it, so much silence is abounding and you know it's just silence can kill you i mean every, I, if you look at all these lines they're 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 talking about this moment i'll read you two yeah. verses please uh, this is from when the words go away the snow's coming faster, my view round the bend, a beautiful valley tucked into a glen can barely be seen. But where is the wind, where is the noise, where are voices again? Locked in a capsule for time without end, watching the world through a pane or a lens. There's nothing to fear when there's nobody near, but silence can kill, and there's lots of it here. Lots. Too so much. So poignant. There's yeah, too, it's too really much. wild. No, you know what I really love? I yeah. mean, you know, shaking shaking someone's outstressed hand sounds like a tin machine song it's like bowie at his weirdest it gave and trey him a, just standing trey standing in like green onesie pajamas like i imagine it's got like the button where he can like his no, there's a there's a, that's the green clone suit he repurposed i know i know i know great i was seeing it oh i see like an old yeah. i do i love that one you yeah. there hiding in plain sight by the window in the night the yeah. time is coming when you'll stand shaking someone's outstretched hand. Yeah, it speaks to a new reality. It yeah. speaks to like not being able yeah. to shake the hand and then being it's able to world. shake the hand. Yeah, you long for the times when when you could, you could touch your pals. Yep. Uh, Lonely, and then, and then Lonely Trip is one that I love so yeah. much too. That one's just so beautiful. Lonely Trip is just, what a, what a fun one. It's really amazing. Then there's the two rockers. I mean, really, really, I mean, I never needed you like this before and I never left home as one uh, I saw you say that it made you feel like the others were just a warm up. Like you like that one a lot. Never left home yet. Yeah, uh, 
up until Never Left Home, my favorite by far was I Never Needed You Like This Before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. That one blew it's me away. It's like, yeah, it's like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> Ray can write beautiful ballads on his guitar. Um, and but this one kind of took me by surprise. It was like, whoa, that is a fucking rocker that came just out of his living room. And it was stunning. And get it that, yeah, that sounded like early. That was like early David Gilmore shit right there. Mm-hmm. Like that was like fire. early Pink Floyd. And then I don't know how he upped it with Never Left Home, which mm. absolutely blew me away. It was just, I don't know. It's so Where, echoey and reverby and bizarre. Can, it's just so great. I love it. I love can it. I ask you a little bit about what that's ba- about? Because I never left home. It just feels like, and again, these lyrics are so pointed to the moment. I mean, is he, and again, I could be told I'm wrong right away and I'm totally fine with that, but uh, it seems like you, you, he's escaping his like physical confines with just his mind. He's talking about, you know, having journeys with his mind, but being, you know, he never left home. This is, right. I mean, it's that simple. I think it's that simple. I think you nailed it. Impressed by composure you've shown for a week. I seem to recall that you got it from me, but now I'm weakened, confidence shattered. And then it occurs to me, none of it mattered. Yeah. Drowned with delight, I escape in the night, hoping for something to spoil my flight. I'll never be halted. I always shall roam. But then it occurs that I never left home. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and what's what's amazing is, you know, and I know this from like listening to some of their stuff, Trey and Mike have both been practicing transcendental meditation. And for mm-hmm. 20 minutes, twice a day, you really do, you know, you leave home. You mentally are able to kind of transcend all this bullshit. And you could tell in his writing and, you know, and, and, and the, the way that this music really is just kind of driven that he's going somewhere else and he's going to a good place. And then he's bringing back a little bit of knowledge from the, from the other, you know, planes of dim- and, dim- and dimensions. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that's the stuff to me that's super exciting, you know, to take your lyrics and bring it to that transcendent place. Um, it's the only thing that we can do right now. How is his, how's like, do, do you talk with him daily? Is he, is he hanging in there? Is he like cooped up? Like, I think some people are better at being cooped up than others. You know, like some people are digging this. They're like, yeah, whatever. It's a vacation. I don't have to go to my office. I feel like a fuck. I feel like a, like a, like a circus animal, right? Like I'm climbing the walls. <laughs> Sounds like you're, uh, you're lonely more. I, I know that Trey's got, you know, people, people in his house. So I think he's less lonely. And I think obviously we all know what he's up to. He's, he's making music. And I think he's sort of uh, taking a well, you know, deserve a couple of days off just uh, sitting back and checking out the reaction to Sigma Oasis. And, and, and then we get to get back to a song a day, right? Then we'll get back to a song a day. <laughs> yep, yep. He needs to clean his room. He needs to clean his room. <laughs> he did. It looked That's like one he was thing up, I noticed. He was upping his game every time. There was like some something <laughs> changing every time. It was yeah, cool. <laughs> when uh, they did that point where they went to um, uh, the lights, when they strung up lights, I was just like, oh, it's on now. He's 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 getting his quarantine on. Yeah, Corotta sent him a care package. <laughs> I have to shout out my friend, speaking of care packages, my friend Hunter Hastings uh, made a trip to Maine and brought me back some Bissell, Bissell Brothers beer. And wow, my friend uh, nice. Tebow Thomas, Stephen Thomas. Uh, yeah, did the drive. He did the drive. And so uh, thanks, Tebow. Thanks, Hunter, for that. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm excited to meet up with a uh, with uh, Cully from Treehouse tomorrow. He's gonna be bringing me some Julius Ooh. and uh, some good New England beers because uh, I'm gonna hunker beer. down for a for a long month. But yeah. uh, this was I mean I I, I really am, I'm so excited to dive back into the album again yep. and again and again. And this is one that I mean really like you said it just in passing with this Tom is that there's not one track I don't like. There's really literally nothing on this album Absolutely. that I don't want to hear. I feel that that they they've done they've fallen into the trap. Fish before has fallen into the trap of putting on like an inside joke kind of track. Um, how many people go back and listen to um, is it Ficus? Ficus. That's exactly <laughs> the song I had in my head this whole or, time. Or, I didn't want yeah, to say it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it's, it's like end of session. If you put if you put that on, it, it kind of like people listen to it once and go, oh, that's you know that's humorous, but it ultimately kind of sabotages the album in a way. And I think they didn't fall into the trap of self sabotage, unintentional. I don't mean it's intentional. Mm-hmm. I just think they they finally like arrived at this idea. Let's just fucking put the best stuff on, and they did. They find tried and true, toured, and true workhorse songs that are amazing. 
Did your did your first listen? Were you just so satisfied with everything the way? I mean, I know it goes without saying we talked about how amazing it was, but to hear your lyrics, you know, we've heard them live. We've heard these songs live. I mean, this is a book. This is a novel that you wrote. This album. I I couldn't and, I couldn't be prouder. This is yeah. the most. There's a last night was a pinnacle in my songwriting career by far. This is an amazing, amazing. I feel fish masterpiece that I'm really privileged and happy to be involved with. That's well, we're we're both very privileged and happy to to talk with you about thank it, you, Tom, Tom. And we love you very much. And uh, please stay safe. And uh, you know, thank you for your time, Mikey. You too. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks. You, Tom. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone out there. Really, this is uh, we'll all be back at it soon enough. Stay safe. Uh, you guys are all amazing. And everybody, uh, stay tuned to Osiris Media on YouTube, on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. We've got a bunch of amazing content. You can follow at Mike Fenoya, at Tom Marshall 111, or at Boy Tommy on Instagram, and <laughs> at Mike S H Z A. Uh, and uh, thank you guys so much. Stay Thanks, safe, Matt. stay home. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank, thank you, Matt. For setting thank you, up. Matt, for doing this. Yeah. And thank you, everybody, for spending time with us. And uh, if you have any money that you can donate, <laughs> donate it to your local hospitals. Yes. They need it right now. They really do. Take care of the people that are the heroes that are taking care of us. We love you guys. Peace Perfect. out. Thank you all.